So let's take a look at the limit of a function. So the proper notation for the limit is going to be as follows. It's going to be the limit of some function f of x as x approaches some x value a, and that's going to equal a y value l. So basically with limits we're trying to find what value or what y value l does the graph of f of x approach as x approaches some x value a. And so there are also one-sided limits where the limit from the left hand side is written like this where we have the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the negative direction. And then there's a right hand limit also where the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the positive direction or from the right hand side. And so in order for the actual limit to exist, the limit from the left hand side must equal the same value as the limit from the right hand side. So they all need to equal the same value L. So for this first set of problems, we have to use the given graph of f to state the value of each quantity if it exists, and if it does not exist, then explain why. So for letter A, we have the limit of f of x, and realize this entire graph in blue is of f of x. So we have the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the negative direction. Because we do have that negative, so that tells us as x approaches 1 from the left-hand side or from the negative direction. So if we look at the graph of f of x, we're looking as the x value approaches 1 from the left-hand side, what is the y value? Well, the y value is 2. So we can go ahead and say the limit as x approaches 1 from the negative direction of f of x is equal to 2. Now this time for b, we have the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the positive direction or from the right-hand side. So if you look at that, as the graph of f of x approaches the x value of 1 from the right-hand side, realize we approach a value of 3. So we can say that the limit is going to be 3. So now for letter C, we have the limit of f of x as x approaches 1. Now remember, for the actual limit to exist at the x value of 1, the limit from the left-hand side must equal the limit from the right-hand side. Well, in this case, the limit from the left-hand side is 2, as we can see here, and the limit from the right-hand side is 3, as we can see here. So 2 and 3 are obviously not equal to each other, so we can say that the limit does not exist because the left-hand side, or the limit from the left-hand side and the limit from the right-hand side are not equal to each other. So we just put DNE or does not exist. So now for letter D, we have the limit of f of x as x approaches 5. So if you look at the graph here, as the graph of f of x approaches the x value of 5, from both the left-hand side and from the right-hand side, realize they both approach a value or a y value of 4. So we can say that the limit of f of x as x approaches 5 is equal to 4. So now for letter E, we have f of 5. Now realize it's not asking for the limit, it's just asking for when we plug in 5 for x into the function, what do we get as the y value? But realize when we plug in 5 for x, there is a hole and the function is not defined exactly at x equals 5. Because it's not defined at x equals 5, we can go ahead and say that f of 5 does not exist, so d and e. Because the limit from the left-hand side and the limit from the right-hand side at x equals 5 both approach a value of 4, but the actual value at x equals 5 does not exist. So now moving on to the second set of problems, it's the same process here, but instead of f of x, we instead have g in terms of t. So let's go ahead and first start with the limit of g of t, the function, as t approaches 0 from the negative direction or from the left-hand side. So as t approaches 0 from the left-hand side, realize that we approach a y value of negative 1. So we can go ahead and say the limit is going to be negative 1. And what about now the limit of g of t as t approaches 0 from the positive direction? Well, it comes from, if it comes from the right-hand side, the limit, even though it's not existent at that value because there's a hole, the limit approaches the y value of negative 2. So we can go ahead and say the limit is negative 2. Now, what about for the actual limit as t approaches just 0 itself? Well, once again, in order for the limit at t equals 0 to exist, the limit from the left-hand side must equal the limit from the right-hand side. The limit from the left-hand side is negative 1. The limit from the right-hand side is negative 2. Since they are different, we can say that the limit as t approaches 0 of the function g of t does not exist. So now we have the limit of g of t as t approaches 2 from the negative direction or from the left-hand side. So let's look at the t value of 2, which is right here. So if we go ahead and approach 2, or the t value of 2 from the left-hand side, realize the limit is going to be 2. So we can go ahead and say the limit is 2. Now for the next problem, letter E here, the limit of g of t as t approaches 2 from the positive direction or from the right-hand side. If we approach the t value of 2 from the right-hand side, realize the y value is 0. 
So we can go ahead and say the limit is equal to zero. Now, once again, for the limit of g of t as t approaches two, in order for that limit to exist, the limit from the left-hand side must equal the limit from the right-hand side. Realize those two are not equal, so we can say that the limit of g of t as t approaches two does not exist. So now for letter g, we have just g of two. Once again, there is no limit notation, so this is not asking for a limit. This is just asking for, does the value exist when we plug in two for t? But when we plug in two for t, realize that there is a value here that does exist because it's shaded in, and that value is exactly equal to one. So we can go ahead and say g of two equals one. Now what about for the limit of g of t as t approaches four? Well, as t approaches four, once again, both the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit both approach the value of three. So we can go ahead and say that the limit of g of t as t approaches four is exactly equal to three.